Welcome, friends. Um, today on the channel, we are going to make something that I never thought in a million years I would ever make for you. Uh, it is a look deep and dark into one of my guilty pleasures. And so the impetus for showing you this um, comes from a couple of weeks ago. One of my cousins in Arkansas texted me a picture of a handwritten recipe called Aunt Pat's Wiener Soup. Um, so Aunt Pat was my mom, and I'd never seen the recipe written down. This was the first time I'd ever seen it written down. And it's a recipe that I've been making my entire life. And so we sort of figured that this was written down 1976 or 1978, somewhere in there. Um, so I would have been 10 or 12 years old at that point. I would have already been making this on my own um, on weekends. Not a fantastic soup, but it's still something to this day that I make. Um, even though it's probably not the best thing, it just brings me comfort on those days, you know, when you're, when you're starting to feel sick, like you've got a cold. Anyway, into this pan, I put a little bit of butter and um, some diced onion and diced celery. And we don't want to brown it, we just want to soften it. And because I've never seen it written down, it was very interesting to me to look at this recipe and say, I've only ever made this from memory of what I thought I saw my mother doing. And obviously one of my cousins sat down, watched my mother make it and wrote it out. And my memory has shifted over the years of what this soup was and what I make has changed from what is written down, but it's still essentially the same. It's still, package of hot dogs and a couple of cans of mushroom soup with uh, potatoes and corn mixed in. And you know, yeah, I hear you, but you know what? Somehow it all comes together and it tastes great. Now I don't know where my mother got this from. I've always assumed that it was a recipe that um, Campbell's Soup put out in order to sell soup, um, but who knows? So you take wieners and you just chop them up a little bit. Um, over the years, I have tried, you know, expensive hot dogs or expensive wieners. You know, the really, really good ones. But time and time again, I've come back to um, using just the no-name wieners. Uh, there's something about the flavor that I just find fantastically comforting. So I've chopped up some of them and I'm gonna put these in with the celery and the onion and just continue cooking that down to soften it. And then I'll chop up the rest of these hot dogs. Okay, so this looks like it's softened up nicely. Next goes some corn. I'm using frozen corn. Um, I noticed that in the written recipe, my mother would have used canned corn. Um, and canned corn would be perfect in this. So there we go. We've got a nice mixture of corn in there. I put in some cracked black pepper. Now the written down recipe says to put in salt. Somewhere along the line, I have stopped putting salt in. I find that between the wieners um, and the soup and the salt that I put in with the potatoes, it's salty enough for me. Um, if you find that it needs some salt, Certainly go ahead and put some in. Now, we come to the soup. Um, cream of mushroom soup. Two cans of cream of mushroom soup. Um, somewhere along the lines, I switched from two cans of cream of mushroom to one can of cream of mushroom and one can of cream of celery. But you know, when I went to the store to get the ingredients to make this recipe, um, there was no cream of celery. And I was kind of surprised. I don't buy a lot of canned soup anymore. And I guess that in general is something that's happening in the marketplace. And I was amazed at how few choices there were anymore for canned soups. So if you're a lover of canned soup, you must be pulling your hair out. Um, I know there's two or three that I do eat regularly or I keep in my emergency cupboard for you know, just to have, 
but man, there's really not much out there anymore. I guess everyone's moving to what they think are healthier options, um, which aren't always healthier. So, in go the two cans of soup. Next in, uh, two cans of milk. We just stir that together. Looking good. So, in this pot, I have some potatoes that I have. Uh, I've done a small dice, and then just boiled them in salt and peppered water. If it was pasta, you would say al dente. Uh, you don't want them cooked until they're fully cooked or mushy. You still want to have a little bit of bite because they're going to cook more in this soup, and you don't want them to fully disintegrate. Stir that in, and now go in the rest of the wieners or hot dogs. I don't know. What do you say where you live? Wieners or hot dogs? Um, packaging here kind of uses both words. And then, of course, we've got French and English together, so that adds sometimes to the confusion. Am I reading the French side of the package, or am I reading the English side of the package? Uh, you reach a point where you just don't know anymore, and it's just all natural. So, uh, stir that in. Now... Um, the last ingredient for me is hot sauce, and over the years it's been Tabasco, it's been Frank's Red Hot, it's been a bunch of different types of pepper sauce. Uh, Julie doesn't really like this soup too much, so she will put in sriracha, um, which is great. If you like sriracha, put that in as well. And for me, that's it. It's done. Now we just sort of heat it through and bring all of the flavors together. The written recipe from my mom, um, she would have added carrots. And you know what? Racking my brain for the life of me, I do not remember carrots being in it. And that's kind of, to me, that's part of cooking. And that's why traditional or authentic are difficult words for me to use because you your memory changes over time and what you think today is authentic could be completely different from what you did 20 or 30 years ago, which is very interesting to me. Now, you can finish this. My mom would finish it with a couple more tablespoons of butter. Might be a little bit too much today. I no longer do that. Um, I think it's kind of funny. She says to put in one tomato chopped up. My mom would put tomato in everything. Didn't matter what it was. If she could put a tomato in that recipe, she would put a tomato in that recipe. And... Um, Parsley, a few sprigs of parsley on top when you serve it. So I don't do any of those anymore, but I think it is a little bit too thick, so I might add a little extra milk. So, mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> this is something that just makes me smile. It's so simple. Um, it's kind of almost maybe sort of good for you, um, but it's certainly not something that you would want to eat every week, even though there were times in university where I probably did eat this every week. Uh, this just takes me back and comfort food. I mean, every once in a while you need to find a comfort food that just makes you feel like you're having a warm hug. And this is one of those things that does it for me. Mm. So, now this isn't a soup that you need to simmer for a very long time. Um, once it's brought up the temperature, it's ready to eat. But just like almost every soup that you've ever made in your life, stick this in the fridge, and tomorrow or the next day, it's going to be way better. Um, all of the flavors come together, and it's really good. So there you go. Uh, one of my darkest culinary secrets, hot dog soup or wiener soup. Um, I love it. Uh, give it a try if you're brave enough. You might love it too. 
Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.